Footsteps walking with me Footsteps I cannot see But every move I make And every step I take I know they're there with me They walk with me all the way Beside me day by day Through good and bad Through happy and sad Those footsteps won't go away I'll never walk in life alone There'll always be someone there I know he won't let me down He's with me everywhere The special things in life I've done Have been through him and his love I've been blessed in so many ways Thanks to the Lord above Footsteps walking with me Footsteps I cannot see But every move I make And every step I take I know they're there with me They walk with me all the way Beside me day by day Through good and bad Through happy and sad Those footsteps won't go away Footsteps walking with me Footsteps I cannot see But every move I make And every step I take I know they're there with me They walk with me all the way Beside me day by day Through good and bad Through happy and sad Those footsteps won't go away through good and bad, through happy and sad, by my side they will stay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. On behalf of the family, I'd like to thank you for all being here this morning. And uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in uh, repaying our respects to Sherry. And we, uh, we come to you knowing that uh, she's with you right now. And we just, uh, we want to just pray that uh, you be with the family this morning as uh, as we go through this service and uh, everything that we say and do would, would uh, glorify you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. At this time, I'd like to read the obituary. Sherry Lynn Sitzma, daughter of Joseph Edward and Marjorie Faye Selby Nace was born on October 5, 1947, at her parents' home near Bussey, Iowa. She was a 1965 Twin Cedars High School graduate, and soon after, on September 11, 1965, married the love of her life, Danny Eugene Sitzma, at the Oskaloosa First Assembly of God Church. In February 1966, they moved to their current home on 15th Avenue East. Initially, Sherry worked at the Continental Overall Factory. She went on to work at Rome and Hola, where she learned the love of art and the art of gardening. She never shied away from hard work. She helped Gene with his concrete business 
and mowed many yards. She opened her home to countless children for over 20 years, babysitting them and loving, feeding, and teaching them. The sits, the sits in my yard was something to be experienced. It was beautiful and produced lots of tasty produce, which was shared generously. She was an excellent cook and baker. Her home always smelled of something delicious, and she shared many batches of cookies with friends and family. She collected precious moment figures. She loved to have fun. Dancing was a favorite pastime, as well as listening to country western music. Sherry passed away Friday, May the 31st, 2024, at the Mahaska Health Hospice Serenity House in Oskaloosa. She was 76 years old, seven months and 26 days. Her family includes Jean, her husband of 59 years, her children, Belinda and Rich DeGroote of Rose Hill, Daryl and Brenda Sitzma of Oskaloosa, her eight granddaughters, Nicole Brandon Williams of Spring Hill, Tennessee, Elizabeth DeGroote of Boston, Massachusetts, Kelsey DeGroote of Oskaloosa, Sharon M. Lobrick of University Park, Shelby Pinninger of Oskaloosa, Brianne and Kyle Brown of New Virginia, Iowa, Faye Sitzma of Oskaloosa, and Riley Sitzma of Oskaloosa, her 10 great grandchildren, Noah, Elijah, Adeline, JC, Calliope, Josh, Jamie, Emma, Brinley, and Benjamin, and her brother, Gary and Alice Nace. In addition to her parents, Sherry was preceded in death by her by a son, Ronnie, two brothers, Harold and Bill, two sisters, Dorothy Shepherd and Carol Welch, and her half-sister, Nada uh, Kidwell. And now the granddaughters, Brianne Brown, Riley Sitzma, Faith Sitzma, and Shelby Pinnegar will sing the old rugged cross.
And now I would like to introduce Kirby Selby, who's going to give the eulogy. sympathy to you guys and I pray that God will send you a comforter to comfort you during this heavy time and Gary uh, Sherry's brother and Alice Ann that God will send his comforter to you and speak to your hearts and bring people to you to encourage you this is Glenda and Daryl's fault me being up here <laughs> they thought I'd lighten the load because I'm not really sharp on a lot of things. So, anyway, here it goes. Uh, first of all, I want to get things cleared up. Jean has said 59 years married to a nice Selby girl. Either he's not all there or something was wrong because Jean lasted 59 years with Sherry, my first cousin. So, uh, uh, we'll start off with a generation thing, uh, memory lane. Sherry was all about family. Back in the 50s and 60s, we, were all, we had 26 cousins. We ran together and grew up together. And uh, our aunts and uncles were uh, very important. This is the basis of Sherry being a hard worker, family orientated. So uh, we lost Al and Nori Rhodes. Ann Elvin, Junior and Katie, Harry, Gene and Madge, and then of course Joe and Marge. We've lost 14 cousins. First cousin, Danny Clay, Rosemary, Jerry and Gary, Bridge and Brenda, Denny, Steve, Harold, Billy, Carol, Dorothy, Dort Jean, who I call her, Can, Carol Ann Naves, and Sherry now. So it was, uh, all that was really important to Sherry and all of us growing up together. We lived at the Nace Farm when we were early days. That's where we learned how to hunt. We learned to fish. We learned how to work hard, put up hay and stuff. Uh, and with 26 cousins running around out that farm, 
we had several ants that would pop you up on the side of the head if you're, I didn't, they didn't care if you were their, your kid or not. The uncles didn't have to do anything. The, the ants all kept us in line. So uh, my younger memories of Sherry, after my dad died, I was nine and she was 17. Sherry, uh, she would take me to Oskaloosa with Joe and Marge. We'd go street dancing, they'd play country music, and I was a nine year old. I learned how to dance when I was nine. Uh, Sherry loved to dance. The whole bunch of the, the Selby and the Claire's and they dance, dance, dance. They liked to hug and kiss too. Sometimes you think, wow, I'm a cousin, but yeah, I'm getting really kissed. <laughs> but uh, So we learned how to uh, dance and uh, work hard. We learned how to put, butcher animals. We learned how to hunt but we learned how to enjoy life. Very simple life. And uh, that farm life is important to all of us. After uh, Gene and Sherry got married, and uh, I remember uh, Aunt March was pulling a tractor or a hay wagon. Me and Sherry was up on top, we put up there. I was still a young kid and March, she didn't pay attention. She went through the, the double gates and hit a, hard spot and tipped the wagon for the all the hay off me and Sherry went down on the ground and Marge she was halfway down the field before she would look back and the hay was all off the wagon and me and Sherry was in a pile, pile of hay so Sherry was always working too hard she liked to go fishing in the earlier days we went to a lot of farm ponds reservoir and then when Miami Lake started up we went out there and they, we loved to catch bullheads a lot of ball heads. And uh, plus, did I mention that she liked to country music and dancing too? And I liked to kiss and hug? Because it was constant with Sherry. That's how she knew, that's how she showed she cared about everybody. She wanted to hug you and kiss you and uh, hold you. Uh, and our family is all mixed up because our friends think they're our relation and we think they're our relation. Our cousins think we're, I'm called Uncle Kirby by a lot of my cousin's kids. And so this family just is tight and uh, they're mixed up a little bit. <laughs> uh, we loved to roller skate when we were younger. A lot of roller skating, looks at, and uh, swimming in ponds after we put up hay. And uh, like I say, dancing and listening to music. We dance, dance, dance. And uh, I remember a lot of, Sherry and Jean got married. They had a lot of parties in their garage. Go there and we'd have costume parties, we'd have food. That's one thing about Sherry, when you went to Sherry's house and Jean's, you gotta eat a lot of food, a lot of good food. So, Sherry loved to send out cards to people during Christmas and uh, I was supposed to get this information from the grandkids but these grandkids are like secret agents they, did, they didn't give up any information to me so they kept it all in their hearts and they're taking it but anyway what I did learn that uh, during the holidays Sherry decorated the house the house was just decorated every holiday inside the house, a bunch of stuff. The grandkids had, except for the Christmas at the Sismas outside. The kids, everybody drove by that. And, uh, you could, that was Mr. Christmas and Mrs. Christmas right there. You were drove by the house during Christmas time. And the grandkids got involved with a lot of that too. And uh, uh, a couple of grandkids said, Grandma Sherry loved to give back rubs. And they, she liked sleepovers. And I, I really didn't understand this part. Sleepovers and like to, uh, when they got together, put mayonnaise in that girl's hair because it was a conditioner or something. Where one of the grandkids said, and I didn't understand that either. She was eating sandwiches and got mixed up. <laughs> but, uh, 
a music was playing, the grandkids had to dance in the kitchen with grandma. Dance, dance, dance. And uh, the back rubs, the, this is all about memories. Uh, Sarah shared with me something special that melted my heart that uh, uh, she uh, sings a song that was her grandma's favorite, You Are My Sunshine, to her little girl, little baby. And uh, so that's, that's how we keep memories going is don't keep it to yourself, share them with each other and uh, build each other up. And so that's the main thing. When you got a memory, share it with somebody, keep uh, sharing your memories alive. Share it with miss by everybody, but not be, not be forgotten because all the good memories we have in our hearts. And, uh, because the grandkids not giving me any information, that's all I have. <laughs> God bless you all. Now we'll have Adam Lobrick sing in the garden.
Sherry and Jean blessed with a lot of talent in their family. Thank you for all that you've done this morning. Uh, I'd like to give a little bit of background before I get into my message. Uh, Sherry and I have been lifelong friends. I met Sherry and her brothers and sisters when I visited that one room country school called County Line. And, uh, I visited there and I, I, uh, I was only eight, 10 years old when I went out over there to visit. And uh, that's when I first met the Nace family. I had some cousins, some Cravers, kids that went there and, uh, and uh, there was some uh, Antolix, Andy and his sisters was there. Uh, so that's where I first uh, uh, met Sherry. Years later, we became neighbors. My dad bought a farm right next door. So uh, uh, that's when we really developed a really strong, uh, a really strong friendship. When, uh, when I think of Sherry's important qualities, they would be the three H's, hospitality, hugs, and hard work, all of which she acquired during her upbringing. If you visited her home when she was growing up, you'd understand why. The first thing you'd experience when you visited Joe and Marge's home was hospitality and an, and an environment that was based on hard work. Uh, there was kind of an unwritten there's kind of an unwritten rule at, J at Joe and Marge's house. If you eat, you work. Right, Kirby? That's right. <laughs> as, a, as a neighbor kid, uh, I used to go over there quite a bit, spend quite a bit of time with, uh, with uh, all of them. And uh, I remember uh, Sherry didn't come by hard work. not being uh, brought up around it uh, or even even her mom when it comes time to put up hay Marge would spend hours and days on that little Ford tractor raking hay and all the kids had to work uh, putting up hay I'd go over there and uh, I, I was a teenager or, or, you know and uh, I thought I was rough and tough Till I got beside Sherry putting up hay. <laughs> I couldn't even compete. She could shovel corn and beans faster than anybody I ever knew and keep it up. Uh, like I said, her, her work ethic started at home. Uh, she had good examples, her parents. And uh, uh, it, uh, it, it, uh, when, it talk, when we talk about her uh, cooking, uh, she didn't come by that strange either. Her mom, Marge, was one of the best cooks. I, I always looked forward to eating over there, because I tell you what, when, when, uh, when Marge cooked, uh, she put on a good feed. And uh, the thing about it was, and, uh, and I think some of, the, some of the relatives will attest to that, when you were there, you were family. It didn't matter, uh, like, like Kirby said, uh, when it comes to discipline, you didn't know where you're gonna get cracked if you got out of line, because uh, all the ants and stuff. Uh, and uh, they treated me like family. And uh, matter of fact, the last <coughs> the last kiss I got <coughs> was in the hospice house. I had to bend over. Uh, Sherry was in bed. I had to bend over to get my hug. She kissed me on the cheek, called me brother. And uh, I hold that. Excuse me. I hold that very dearly. That, uh, that just goes to show you the kind of friendship we had. Uh, we loved each other. And uh, don't get all goofy on me as far as when I say we loved each other. I'm talking about Christian love. Uh, it was a, it was above and beyond a good friendship. It was a loving friendship. And uh, 
I'll cherish that forever. Uh, like I said, uh, she learned she learned how to cook from her mom. How many of you remember Marge's brownies? All right. How many of you still have Marge's recipe and make them according to me? I got it right. Uh, uh, when we have church functions, uh, Alice. At our church, we got a theme. Whenever we meet, we eat. And uh, uh, on once one Sunday a month, we have a, a praise service where we have gospel groups come in and sing. And afterwards, we have coffee time and have fellowship. And uh, I always look forward to whenever uh, Alice brings brownies. I know they're Marge's recipe. And uh, those things you never forget. And uh, you don't need to raise your hand, but how many of you in here have ever met Sherry without getting a hug? And that was just standard procedure. You knew whenever, and, and even uh, when she was in the nursing home, uh, her room was three rooms down from my mother-in-law. So whenever I'd go uh, to the nursing home, uh, I'd, uh, I'd sneak around the corner and spend time with Sherry. And uh, we'd visit and pray together and, and uh, even if she couldn't get out of hug, out of bed, she you had to bend over to get that hug and kiss on the cheek, and uh, so uh, yeah, it uh, it it's just a, a special relationship. It says when I think of people that spend time and special efforts to earn a degree, like doctors when they get their MD, or a dentist that gets a DDS. I can, I can easily imagine Sherry with a degree. Uh, how about Sherry HWW, hardworking woman. She earned that degree, spent her whole lifetime working hard. And uh, she, spent, uh, she spent a lot of time working hard, whether she was working for an employer or beside Jean, but she, she, her specialty was again, those hugs. When I asked the family if there was any special scriptures Sherry liked, they handed me her Bible and said she had marked several of her favorite verses. And I'd like to read a few of those she marked. When, when I was asked to uh, speak this, uh, this morning, when I was asked to speak, I. I was wondering what scriptures I would use, and uh, I had a few in mind. Then when they told me that uh, Sherry had marked special ones in her Bible, I thought, well, I'll kind of go with her list. Consequently, it ended up it's the same list I would have had. So I guess we kind of think alike on that that uh, that effort. The first one was uh, she she had marked that I noticed was Ecclesiastes chapter three. It's a very familiar uh, set of uh, verses as verses 1 through 8 Ecclesiastes 3 1 through 8 to everything there is a season a time for every purpose under heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck what what is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate time of war and a time of peace. You notice some of those attributes in there that fit Sherry? A time to laugh, a time to dance, time to embrace. Here we are back them hugs again, aren't we? All right. The next one that she had marked that I found it and, and Believe me, if I would if I would have printed off everything she had marked, we'd be here. We have to have lunch catered in. 
So I'm just, uh, I just picked a few of the, 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 the things that I thought was highlighted to, to fit the situation. Psalm 27, one, it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? She picked another one from Psalms, Psalms 46, one. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In, in, uh, in the realm of things, when it comes to what the, the believers stand on, uh, a very important part of, of, uh, of a belief is grace. Grace is what we get when we get something we don't deserve. And that's God's love. And uh, I think grace is a very important part. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteousness. John chapter 6 verse 47 says most assuredly I say to you he who believes in me has everlasting life this uh, this next one is a real familiar one John 3 16 and 17 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And you know, from the first time I ever read that, I've always noticed that one word that kind of kind of jumped out and grabbed me. And that's whosoever. You know whosoever is? any of us he, he doesn't God doesn't say you have to be a special person or you have to be of a certain uh, family you have to you know he, he just says whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life I think that's very important that we realize that the, that we are the whosoever's John 14 verse 6 this is one of my favorite uh, this is one of my favorite scriptures let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know the way you know. And then in verse 5, Thomas says, Lord, we do not where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I think at this point in time, when Jesus was talking to his disciples, Jesus was talking on a heavenly level, and Thomas was thinking on a worldly level. Thomas was thinking, you know, uh, like, draw me a map, give me the directions. Wait, is this the next town or two towns down, or how far do I have to go? And, uh, but like, Jesus was thinking on a, on a more heavenly level. And when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. And I think that's very important. And then the last one that Sherry, that I, I picked out from her choices, is from Revelations 21, verses 3 and 4. It says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and he shall, and they shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. 
and God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there should be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. That's something that we can look forward to as far as when we get to heaven is that all things are going to be new and and all the stuff that uh, sin has brought into this world will no longer exist in heaven i have a real hard time imagining what heaven's going to be like i think it's going to be so much different that the first the first day in heaven i think the only thing we can say is wow i think we're going to be overwhelmed with the beauty in the serenity of heaven and uh, the one reason I think I have trouble and I think everybody has trouble imagining what heaven will be like is because everything that we deal with and think about is connected somehow with sin sin has entered into everything and when when we think about heaven and not having any sin up there no crying and no pain it's kind of hard to comprehend because down here on earth we're used to uh, pain and, and problems and stuff and, and for us to or at least for me to think about heaven without all that it's 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 really tough to deal with to, to understand how great it's going to be As we see the verses that she marked, we can tell what was important to her. I can only imagine that if she truly believed these teachings, she would want them to be equally important in your life. I want you to notice nowhere in those verses or anywhere in the Bible does it say anything about good old boys going to heaven. The world is full of good old boys. They're honest, hard workers, generous, willing to help others, all those things, but without Having accepted Christ as their personal Savior, they are as lost as the worst person in the world. Please let Sherry's favorite verses influence you to accept Jesus as your Savior and make your reservation in that mansion in heaven. If you have already made that decision, she'd be very happy with you today. I'd like to, sh in, in conclusion of my message, I'd like to share a song that uh, makes me think of Sherry's loving relationship with Jean. The song is by Alan Jackson. It's called, I Wanna Stroll Over Heaven With You. Now we mentioned it in, uh, in the obituary and stuff in the eulogy that uh, Sherry liked country music. She liked to dance. And when you talk, when you think about this song and it says, I wanna stroll over heaven with you. You can imagine that they were doing a two step or they were just walking hand in hand over in heaven so at this time i'd, I'd like you to uh, uh, listen to this song by alan jackson <laughs>
years have kept us making plans as you know but come the morning of the rapture together we'll stand anew while i stroll over heaven with you i want to stroll Sherry was in the uh, hospice house and uh, I got my last <coughs> I got my last kiss and my last hug and uh, the last thing I said to Sherry is I'll see you later and uh, some sweet day we'll meet again let's close the service with prayer our gracious Heavenly Father we just come to you this morning thankful for this time that we can get together and and uh, pay respects to Sherry. We, we just uh, ask you to be with the family, just give them the strength and, and the peace that they need at this time. And again, be with Gene as, uh, as uh, he needs that peace and that, that uh, serenity from this missing his, his wife. We just uh, thank you God for being with us and giving us all the information that we get from the Bible that we can learn how to be the way you'd like us to be. And we just ask that to, you just be with us the remainder of this day as we continue this service. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen.